Dr. Fizz here on a review of work and energy in some modern physics. I would like to do this review so that folks watching um, that may be in engineering or mathematics can benefit from uh, this course. So we have Newton's second law, F equals MA, A is the acceleration, M is the mass, F is the force, and acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Momentum is mass times velocity. And for the constant uh, mass, we could pull the m into the derivative and have the derivative of the momentum with respect to time. However, I want to emphasize that this really is the equation you should start with and if m is constant you should go the other way and then pull it out because sometimes m is not constant if you have a rocket problem you shoot mass out the back and the mass changes and you have acceleration so this is the better starting point and it's a vector equation so we should have a vector sign on there because force has a magnitude and direction let's review the work definition which is force times distance which is a very convenient definition if you had workers in a warehouse pushing refrigerators and dishwashers on rollers to a van or big big truck that we're loading up we would want to pay folks based on the force that they apply for example if you apply a greater force to push a refrigerator you should be rewarded for that and if you should be pushing over a long distance say one appliance is way at the far end of the warehouse and you have to push it all the way across that would be reward it also. And if you're standing by the water cooler and you have no force and no distance, zero times zero is zero, you get no money, no work. And if you're pushing something up against the wall, no distance, and you're not getting to the uh, loading uh, truck, uh, then force times zero is zero. And if you're a zombie pushing air and walking toward the uh, loading uh, truck, but you're not pushing anything, your force is zero, time, zero times distance is zero, and you get paid nothing also. So let's apply this to um, a case where we have a force that may vary uh, from uh, point to point. So we have a force F applied over a small infinitesimal dx. Now we do the integral to find the work done. We assume, by the way, the force is lined up with the direction that we're pushing in. If not, you have to use the uh, component of the force in that direction. Uh, but we're going to assume we're lined up. And here we go. We send a superhero into outer space, and there's a mass there at rest push that mass from rest to some speed v and let's calculate the work done. So a work work is done by applying a force to that uh, mass f dx. f is ma, a is dv dt and a chain rule trick dv dt is dv dx, dx dt and the dx dt is v m is also there and dv dx dx is replaced by the differential dv. Integral is very easy to do. We get one half mv squared. Very important in physics. That's called the kinetic energy. So when the superhero lets go and the mass continues at speed v, we say that the work done has gone into energy of the motion. Kinetic energy equals m equals one half mv squared. And if the superhero should go up to a mass already moving at speed v1, we integrate from v1 to v2 instead of from 0 to the v, and we get the difference in kinetic energy. That's your work energy theorem. Your work done is your delta kinetic energy, your final kinetic energy minus your initial. Now we're going to derive Einstein's most famous equation. You're going to do it as a homework problem, and I'm going to talk you through it a little bit, but you'll have to do some things on your own. Here, we want to know what the momentum is, so we go to Einstein's form of momentum and pull off the regular uh, spatial part here. It's gamma m v vector. We're going to pick the direction x in the direction of this velocity, so we don't have to worry about the vector. We can take the uh, vector sign off, and the derivative of the momentum with respect to time this will be your momentum. There's your gamma is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. There's your m. And your v is replaced by just, your v vector is replaced by just v because we're taking that to be the x direction. We want to do this integral. And I want you to use some chain rule logic and tricks with differentials 
to get this into this form. And this form here is a little bit inconvenient because uh, I would be able to do this integral in here if I didn't have this V hanging around because see I could put a 2 in front of that V and a minus 2 and, and proceed but that V is a nuisance. If I could move that D dv over to this uh, side and get a 1 that would be nice and that's what integration by parts does which you can think of as a form of the product rule. So what I want to do is consider this inside the parentheses to be f and this to be g. Consider the product fg and take the derivative with respect to v. Well, the product rule, you take the derivative of the first, df dv, times the second, right, which I put that on the left side there, and then it's plus the first times the derivative of the second. Well, I have here df dv, I have times g, I have this, but I don't want this. So I write it as this piece minus this other piece and look that moves the derivative from the f over to the g I get a minus sign and I have to pay the price of this that doesn't scare me at all because if I integrate that with dv hey that's easy that's going to be a perfect differential and I'll just evaluate f and g at the limits of integration so I'll take the deal so when you apply this this here is your f and this is your G, you replace this with this combination. When you do that, you will get this situation here because remember your F was MV over that square root and G was the V. So there's your product, MV squared now over this. And I subtract here my, this is my F, and what is here is D G dv, which is dv, dv is 1, so it's there. I can do this integral by putting, see, a minus 2 there and a minus 1 half out there. Maybe the c squared has to be in there and all. You can see how this can be done with standard practice. And over here, no problem. That's a perfect differential. That'll just lift, and we'll get this. Uh, this first one will just lift, as I said, get mv squared over the square root evaluate it at the limits and here when you put your uh, you know your minus 2 over c squared and put the c squared out here with the minus and the and the one half and then here you have this to the minus one half power you will then have minus one half plus one is a plus one half power you'll get this you can see that this is going to uh, be your answer. You clean up a little bit here. Of course you have to write this out but I'm just leading you through the general idea. And then you will arrive at here everything here evaluated V is just write everything down again and evaluated 0 this goes away and this becomes 1. See that 1 minus 0 and that's the surprise. The surprise is that you have energy at the rest case when the mass was not moving. Einstein's famous equation equals mc squared. Uh, before we look at that uh, again in a second, let's just combine these two together. Uh, if you multiply top and bottom by the square root, you'll have the common denominator and you'll have mc squared here and notice that you'll have uh, mv squared with the minus sign will cancel and you'll get this. So this is the difference of energies. So this is the energy with the speed v minus the energy at v equals zero. That's your work energy theorem in the relativity uh, analysis and we find that the energy that is mv squared, let's go ahead and see that, mv squared uh, over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So if v is equal to 0, you get that mc squared, and in general you get that. Uh, the surprise is, of course, uh, when v is equal to 0, your expression is equals mc squared. So if you take mass like a piece of chalk and make it disappear to get energy because the speed of light is so big and you have to square it, you get so much energy that if that energy were just to be released you could like blow up like the entire university. So that's Einstein's equals mc squared and the kinetic energy is equal to the total energy minus the rest energy. Now here's a neat little problem I'd like you to do. 
using the Taylor series expansion and correspondence limit, you know that when you have uh, relativity, if you let the speeds get smaller and smaller, uh, you recover Newtonian physics. So what I would like you to do is expand this out. This is 1 minus v squared over c squared to what the negative 1 half power. And when you expand those things out, you get a 1. And that 1 is going to give you an mc squared, and there's going to be a minus mc squared. That goes away. That's nice. That goes away. And your first, your next term will be uh, have, since it's minus uh, one half, it'll, it'll be a, a minus will cancel a minus, and when you work this out, you'll have a one half, the c squared will cancel, you'll get one half mv squared. So, of, of course, you write that out, but you can see that it's how it's going to come out. It's going to be real neat. You get a correspondence principle, kinetic energy agrees with Newton.